hi viewers welcome back to another video in this video i have got up have an exciting problem for you it is again taken from the chapter 1 of strength of materials book written by dimoshenko and giri this is slightly uh, moderately difficult problem or you can say a problem where you have to clearly apply your brains so without much ado let's get started so here you have us this is the front view and this is the top view so this is a vibration mount or vibration insulation mount so this is made up of very soft material it is made of rubber then there are two other things there is a steel bar which is this metal thing so this is the steel bar and we have everything inside a steel tube so this particular piece of rubber is bonded here and here as well and the same applies at this particular portion and here as well so that's how this whole thing is constructed now on top of this there will be some sensitive instrument for which the vibrations need to be isolated or that particular machine should be isolated from the vibrations that the floor will be experiencing or wind it may be the other way around as well uh, like we don't want to transfer the vibrations from the machine to the floor either way the purpose of this is to insulate the vibration so uh, now what in the problem they are asking us to evaluate you can see there is a new a coordinate system defined here here, here uh, as little r so little r tells you the radial distance of a particular section from the center of this whole assembly the first question is calculate the va variation of the shear stress as a function of r as a function of little r little r is shown here so as you move radially outwards from the center of the bar towards the tube tube is this fellow over here how shear stress will vary before bringing in mathematics i would like to ask you um, think about a minute and draw the deformed shape of this whole assembly once i apply a p and which section you think or what kind of trend you expect for this particular quantity called the shear stress whether it will be maximum over here or you do you expect the shear stress to be minimum over here what kind of trend whether it will increase as we move from inward to outward think have an answer for all of these questions the second portion of the question is that i told you when we push this whole assembly down using a force capital p what will be the deflection in the vertical direction so that is the next question what is the deflection delta is a simple that i usually use for deflection so these are the two questions we need to answer so pause this video do on in, on your own and then come back to see the rest of the video so addressing the first question we draw the free body diagram like this so here is the our bar and then we have the small little piece of rubber which is having an outer radius of little r because we need to calculate the shear stress at a radius capital r and we assume that over this area like uh, this area over here the shear stress is constant there is no variation in shear stress as we move in this direction so this particular value is same 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 so we expect the variation of shear stress only in the radial direction given this now this dimension is also known this is h i reckon let's call this average shear stress to avg so now bringing in equations of equilibrium let me write it down side on the side 
it will be the P force should be balanced by the resistance. So that will be to average times the diameter will be 2 pi r then area will be mul multiplying the perimeter with the height so you get your tau average varying or assuming a mathematical equation like this make sense so when r is less you have a higher shear stress that is quite acceptable i would say because you are applying the force in the middle so you expect at that location to have more shear stress so makes sense so this is the expression for shear stress average shear stress in the rubber material at a radial distance r okay so uh, we are talking about the stress shear stress acting at this particular point that's it so that kind of concludes the first portion of the question and the next is a little bit tricky and I'll, they are asking us to calculate the deflection. So the B portion of the question is where we need to calculate the deflection. So if you ask me to draw the deformed shape this will be the way how it will look like. So rubber being a very soft material tend to bend like this we are applying the force over here P is acting over here so this will be the roughly the kind of deformed shape which this whole assembly will assume it is fixed over here okay now, how we can calculate the delta for that purpose let me draw the refined drawing of the of this particular portion okay so to understand that let's consider this very small portion here like i am like i will use that or this very small portion over here and understand how it will deform so i'm zooming the i'm taking a small element here let me use a pencil to shade that i'm i'm drawing taking this small piece over here okay this small piece over here and then i'm drawing it over here so assume that i divide that area into three elements okay three small elements uh, i'm not going to finite element and all this stuff but assume that three discrete uh, units or three discrete portion of the material when it gets deformed they will all undergo some shear deformation this is sim this is exactly shear deformation i have shown here this element is getting rotated so this is what shear is and if you from the first answer, we are pretty clear that shear stress is maximum at this region and it is kind of, it's kind of reduces as we go radially outwards. So the shear deformation that this particular portion of the material will be more compared to the shear deformation in this portion and this portion. It will be minimum over here and then shear deformation will increase like this. So shear deformation is increasing so it's not constant so the final deformation final deformation will be this oh i should use a very dark color so that you will get so this is the final deformation makes sense so how we can calculate that so you need to compute the contribution from this then you need to compute the contribution from this and then you need to compute the contribution from this element by contributions i mean this so when um, this particular element rotates then there is a d delta 1 displacement and when this element rotates then there is another d delta 2 and you have to add all these things to get your total deformation so the best way to add is to perform an integration so let's do that integration performing the integration you need to perform this kind of an integration from b d by 2 to b by 2 in case if you are wondering what is d by 2 and b by 2 so okay that's not gonna work so i need to so this is what i mean so from the center to here it is d by 2 
then to here it is b by 2 so we need to compute the small small contributions from d by 2 d by 2 to b by 2 in doing that now what is that contribution if let's say this is of length dr because that's a radial dr then d delta 1 will be d delta 1 will be the angle this particular angle which is the shear strain i am calling it gamma dr so gamma dr will be nothing but your shear stray your shear stress divided by your modulus of rigidity times dr so if i plug this here let me do that it will be integral d by 2 to b by 2 d delta will be tau by g into dr the shear stress is not a constant we can assume but the material properties are constants with respect to r so i am taking that out of the integral sign because we assume that the material is homogeneous and all those stuff then the load p divided by 2 pi r h dr h is a constant p is a constant so that makes the integration far more easy p divided by 2 pi g h d by 2 to b by 2 1 by r dr 1 by dr integration of 1 by r dr is logarithmic r so that will be p divided by 2 pi g h log to the base e r b by 2 divide applying the limits now you need to apply the limits b by 2 and d by 2 once you do that it will be p divided by 2 pi g h logarithmic log log b by 2 to the base a minus log rhythm of d by 2 to the base log a minus b is log a by b i'm not going to the details of all those things then finally the answer is 2 pi g h logarithmic logarithm of b by d to the base e thanks for watching